CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Twenty one thrusters, ninety five pounds for the men, sixty five pounds for the women. Twenty one bar facing burpees, eighteen thrusters, eighteen bar facing burpees, fifteen thrusters, fifteen bar facing burpees, twelve thrusters. 12 bar facing burpees, 9 thrusters, 9 bar facing burpees, 6 thrusters, 6 bar facing burpees, 3 thrusters, 3 bar facing burpees. The clock, save you, it will not. You will do 168 reps or you will quit in the process of trying. 14.5 is for time. Well, hey, thrusters and burpees, everybody's favorite, yeah? No? I heard what some of you guys said. No, you didn't call it. Dave slow pitched you some stuff, he lured you in with the movements you expected, but he slapped you across the face with a format that none of us could have seen coming. How you guys doing? I'm your host, Rory McKernan, and tonight is a very special announcement. It's the final workout of 2014. Now for this finale, guys, we brought it home. We're at Kizar Pavilion in front of an amazing NorCal crowd. We're going to have lots of fun tonight, guys. First. Help me welcome a CrossFitter, he's on the open leaderboard, our special musical guest, DJ Lucky Lou. Yeah, one thing we know, it's a fact, when you get CrossFitters together, good things happen. And this, outside of the CrossFit Games, is the biggest gathering of CrossFitters that we've ever hosted. Now tonight, let's get to business. Dave's unveiled two firsts. So far in the Open, historically, all we've seen is one-on-one -on -one matchups. Tonight, five champions, three men, two women, one funky heat. And in another first for the Open, we've got a task priority workout. Guys, ain't no am rapping here. So you finish when you finish, and the clock can't save you. Now what better way to kick off the season or this 14.5 historic workout than with five champions, the best in the business. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you two amazing females, both of whom have earned the title fittest on earth. Since 2011, the title Fittest Woman on Earth has lived in Europe. Last year, the UK's Samantha Briggs stepped up and out of the shadow of Iceland's two-time champion, Annie Thor's daughter, to take the title. A back injury took Annie out of contention last year, and now Thor's daughter battles to reclaim the crown while Briggs fights to keep it. I learned that my body isn't unbreakable. <laughs> I felt like there was no limit. I could just push myself as hard as I possibly could and nothing could possibly happen. I'm just excited about being there again and yeah, showing people that I'm back. With the depth of talent in the women's field, both champs have their hands full. I think the fact that Annie's back doesn't really change anything in what I'm going to do. I'm excited to be competing against her again. I think the question is how bad do I do in my weaker workouts and how bad she does in her weaker workouts as opposed to how well we do in our strength. Tonight, for the first time since 2011, Briggs and Thor's daughter go head to head as the stakes are raised for the most anticipated matchup of the 2014 season. I'm training hard, I'm trying to stay injury free, I'm trying to develop as an athlete, but 
it's a lot of work to stay on the top. Even if I don't end up on top, but I've given it everything I can, then there's nothing else that I can really do. I'm just excited to get back to that venue, get back to being on the floor, carrying the 3 one go and just get into my own zone and just go. Introducing first, the 2011-2012 Reebok CrossFit Games champion. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Iceland Annie Thor's daughter. So these two women have distinguished themselves amongst all the females in the world. But tonight, Sam and Annie are taking it to a whole other level. They'll be going shoulder to shoulder in the same heat with three men who have also worn the crown. Three-time games champion Rich Froning Jr. is the pinnacle of the CrossFit world. You can't outwork him, and his weaknesses are few. 2010 champion Graham Holmberg is the only man to beat Froning at the games. After a 4th, 10th, and 14th, he now hungers to get back on the podium. But first he'll have to overtake 2008 CrossFit Games champion Jason Kalipa. He placed second behind Rich in the 2013 games and looks to knock Rich off his perch as reigning champion. The competition's always there. There's always people that are going to beat you in any specific workout. Or even if you're the best overall, there's still small things that you can improve on and try to get better at, which brings your overall fitness up. Like I've been swimming two to three days a week, trying to, trying to fix that weakness uh, that we all saw last year. Perhaps no one knows Froning better than Graham Holmberg, his rival from the ultra-competitive Central East region. For me, to beat Rich Froning, I think for anybody to beat Rich Froning is the ability to find the way to beat yourself every day and to be able to walk out of the gym knowing that um, it wasn't just this amount of volume that you did or that you achieved five workouts. You just need to know that when you walked out of that workout that uh, you dug down, you pushed a little farther, you got into that hurt a little worse than you did the day before. This season, the best bet to challenge Froning's dominance is the man who came closest in 2013. I mean, winning in 2008 was, was amazing, but it, you know, that's not my greatest achievement in CrossFit. I mean, my greatest achievement was, was second place this year. My greatest achievement was being nominated Team USA twice. I want to win. 
how badly? Probably just as badly as everybody else, if not more. I'm gonna put in the work to put me in the best position possible to perform well, and now you see me go out there and execute. Tonight, the former champs take on the defending three-time fittest man on earth here in San Francisco. Rich Froning looks to go out strong in what could be the end of an era. This is my last year as an individual, yep. I think that Rich is very good at what he does, and I think to win, to beat him is excellent. I know a lot of people say, well, if, if, if Rich goes out a winner and, you know, then retires, then everybody's going to say, like, well, you didn't win it when Rich Froney wasn't there, um, or you won the games after Rich left, or it's like you, you won the NBA championship after Jordan was gone. It's always going to be challenging and an honor to win the CrossFit Games, period. It doesn't matter who you're competing against. It's going to be something you're going to walk away from and be like, wow, I put in a lot of work to get there. It doesn't have to end on a win, but it needs to end on a win. And uh, that's going to be my goal going into the games this year is, is for it to end on a win. Let's give a huge CrossFit welcome for the 2010 Games champion. Representing CrossFit Hilliard, put your hands together for the golden boy, Graham Holmberg! Dave, this is a, it's a big deal. We've got five champions, thousands of people. Now, CrossFit is about so much more than just a game, and it's gotten uh, real big. It wasn't always this way. You've been around for a lot of that growth. Yeah, and I'd like to take this time uh, to, to take a look at the, the man who created the methodology. 
the man who created the sport, the man who's changed all, all of our lives. The impetus is this, I knew everyone was working out wrong. You'd go to the gym before CrossFit, and it was about endurance. He, he or she could last longest, or about you know bicep size. You got your swole on, and now all of a sudden we've got so many foot pounds per minute expressed over so many minutes. And so we we turned fitness into an engineering problem. It's a successful um, uh, enterprise designed to make people better, and it's highly quantifiable. And out of that will very very naturally come a competition. This is the sport-like quality of CrossFit at every application. And so what we have now is 10,000 affiliates with uh, uh, a million or more uh, members, and 200,000 of those have decided to throw their hat into the ring and to step up and measure themselves against one another and, and against a, a global standard. The Open is an affiliate-driven event, and it's the fittest men and women in the world are in their membership. The game's winners are representative of the gal that's lost 100 pounds, of the dude that has uh, gotten off blood pressure medication, and the young homemaker that's bounced back from uh, two babies in two years. They are those that have, have climbed Everest, but we're all mountain climbers. And it, it's, that's the beauty of it. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder and CEO of CrossFit, Coach Greg Glassman. So Coach Glassman, thousands of fans and five champions are all here for 14.5. If you couldn't join us, you can still be part of the show. Send your tweets, hashtag CrossFit Games, and you can be part of the broadcast. We'll do our best to get your questions answered on the Cool Down Show. We've got a short break now, but don't go away. When we come back, we'll cover movement standards and kick this thing off. This is the first time we've ever taken a high-level boxer, someone at the top. I mean, look, his last fight was Floyd Mayweather. We took this boxer at this pinnacle of this sport, and now we've layered on this amazing strength and conditioning base of CrossFit and seen enormous results. <laughs> We're gonna see what it's like to take a world champion and make him more fit. Increase that fitness, and he's gonna be a better boxer. He's gonna be faster, stronger, more powerful. That's what we're gonna see. That's what's exciting about this project. All right, welcome back. Dave Castro has already unveiled some pain for time. We know what we're facing, a descending rep scheme of thrusters and burpees. The devil's always in the details. So let's take a look at the movement standards for 14.5 to count. It needs to look like this. Workout 14.5 is thrusters, and burpees. Every repetition must have the athlete pass below parallel, where the hip crease is clearly below the top of the knee, and finish with the athlete fully locked out. That means the arms, hips, and legs are extended, and the bar is over the center of the athlete's body when viewed from profile. When taking the bar from the floor, the first repetition may be done in a squat clean fashion. Each repetition of the burpee starts with the athlete touching their chest and thighs to the ground and jumping over the barbell. A two foot takeoff is required. A single foot jump over the barbell will not count. 
Once you clear the barbell and start your next repetition, you must be facing the barbell. There is no time cap for this workout. The standards are very straightforward. If you intend to do the workout right now, please go to the website games.crossfit.com for the full standards and to get your score sheets. But now it's time for no more conversation, lots more action. The voice of the CrossFit Games, Sean Woodland, is on the call. He'll be joined by the 23rd fittest man in SoCal going into this workout, Bill Grundler. Bill, Sean, let's get it. Thanks, Rory, and thank you for joining us here at Keysar Pavilion for the final open announcement of 2014, 14.5. We knew what it was going to be, but we did not expect the way it was served up. You know, it's always it's always a, a wrench into the works right here, but it's, it's classic CrossFit. It's thrusters, it's burpees, but now we're all doing the exact same amount of work through this entire workout, so we're all in for a, a, a tough one on this one. <laughs> Five champions, including the two current Open leaders. On the men's side, Rich Roning. He's won the Open every year he's been in it, except for 2011 when he finished third. For the women, it's Samantha Briggs looking for her second straight Open championship. She currently has two victories in 14.1 and 14.4. I'll tell you what, I'm hoping that Samantha Briggs just crushes this one. She's been hammering through this entire Open, and I think she wants to show the boys that she can take them all. Down to the floor, the Clash of Champions is set to begin. Five seconds. Three, two, one, go! 14.5 underway from a jam-packed Keysar Pavilion. Five champions, Graham Holmberg. Annie Thoris' daughter, Rich Froning, Samantha Briggs, and Jason Kalipa. 21 thrusters, 21 bar facing burpees. We decrease it by three. It's for time. You know, the first thing you think about when you look at this thruster workout is you're going to think Fran. Problem is, though, you don't get to fly through those pull-ups. So they have to do those burpees, which are also going to be a little slower because they got to get over that bar. So how fast do they want to push themselves, especially through this set of 21 and 18 and then 15? Because it's going to get fast at the end when we're doing the 9, 6, and 3. You'll notice the names at the top of your screen are changing colors. The leader will be listed in blue. And right now it's Samantha Briggs with a slight lead on the field for the first time men and women competing head to head here what's been really interesting with samantha and rich those guys have been going back and forth samantha actually had more reps on the first ones uh rich had them off most on the second workout and went back to samantha on the third back to rich on the fourth so this is the tiebreaker for those two champs first set of 21 bar facing burpees and it's samantha briggs through 14. Rich Froning is in second place. He has 11. Holmberg, Thor's daughter, and Khalifa all keeping the same pace. Once again, the leader at the top of your screen, his or her name will appear in blue. And now it's Sam Riggs moving on to 18 thrusters. You know, when she came into the whole arena here, the, the, the word on the back of her shirt was engine. So granted, she's a firefighter, but I tell you what, this girl has a motor like nobody's business. She puts her head down and just goes for it. Doesn't matter how pretty it is, this girl gets work done like nobody. Samantha Briggs looking for her second straight Open Championship, and she has a big cushion on Annie Thorostano, who's in the yellow shorts towards the left of your screen. 75 points separating the two of them on the leaderboard, and now Rich Froning in the middle of your screen. He's on the 95-pound bar and working on his 18 thrusters. The most amazing thing about Rich Froning is he makes everything look so cool, calm, and collected. I mean, these are thrusters, and he should be slamming through this. He's got an amazing fran time, you know, under 220. But look how he rests at the top on every single one of these thrusters. That's something that a lot of other athletes don't do. They want to get the bar up and get it right back down again. He's smooth and consistent, and smooth and consistent is efficient, and that's what wins these events for him. Samantha Briggs still in the lead, going through her set of 18 bar facing groupies. Jason Khalifa chasing Rich Froning, Graham Holberg, and Annie Thorstadter as well in third position. And now Rich Froning is on to his second set of bar facing burpees. And you'll notice this, and we saw this at the games last year. Rich Froning spends a lot of time looking at the big screen. We have one here, and that's the mental game right there. He paces off everybody around him. He knows exactly where everybody is through the entire event. He has enough time to like look up and check everybody out. You know he's going to be looking up the screen here. And he's got Samantha, who's basically running the rabbit right now that's his pace person so as long as he stays close to samantha he's going to be doing just fine sam briggs now on to the 15 thrusters rich Froning still in second jason kalipa slightly over graham over for third and it's annie's daughter in fifth place
Briggs right now. Once Sam Briggs hits six thrusters, she's now halfway, and that's big mentally to know that. There it is right there, 326 halfway through this workout. It's going to be impressive to see if she can hold the last half of this workout at the same clip. Sam Briggs now through 10. Rich Froning's done with his burpees. He's going to join Sam Briggs on that set of 15 thrusters. 65 pounds for the women, 95 pounds for the men. Again, Rich just moves so effortlessly right there. Just doesn't have any sort of, it doesn't look like he's urgent. He doesn't look like he's in a race, but he doesn't ever slow down. And right there's a halfway mark for him. 30 seconds behind Sam Briggs right now. That is impressive. That's what I thought was going to be happening. Jason Kalipa has now separated himself from Graham Holberg and Annie Thoris' daughter. And Kalipa trying to put some pressure on the champ, Rich Froning. Sam Briggs is now through eight bar-facing burpees, and she continues to hold on to the lead that she gained on the very first set of bar-facing burpees. And now Jason Kalipa trying to catch up to Rich Froning. Kalipa nearest to your screen. Next to him is Sam Briggs, and next to Briggs is the three-time CrossFit Game champion, Rich Brody, who says this could be his last year as an individual competitor. I'll tell you what, Jason Kleba is really surprising me right now. He's just such a big athlete, but no one can compare to what Sam is doing. She does not stop. I swear, she's like the Terminator. Will not stop until the job is done. Briggs now, the set of 12. And now starting to break a little bit of her form, and now she's got the rhythm back. I, I just don't think she's too good to stop. And she doesn't make anything look pretty ever. But she is, like I said, she's, her consistency and her motor is so insane. She'll grind through those little things just until she gets to the end. This is the first time since 2011 that Samantha Briggs and Annie Thor's daughter have been in the same competition. Briggs missed 2012 with a knee injury. She came back from that, won her first ever CrossFit Games championship, but Annie Thor's daughter wasn't here last season. She had a back injury. This is exactly what people wanted to see, and it's going to be amazing, especially when we get to the European Regional, just to see what happens there, because that will talk about a foreshadowing for the game. And Annie Thor's daughter had a low back injury that knocked her out of the open last year, and right now she is in fifth place. Men and women just competing against each other here. They're not on the same leaderboard in the open, but doesn't make it any less fun to watch. Absolutely. I'll tell you who's impressing me right now is Jason Kalipa. He's, I mean, by far the biggest athlete out there. And bar facing burpees, this event comes down to the bar facing burpees. A large athlete having to get up and now over that object. That's extra work that he's having to do compared to a lot of smaller athletes. But the guy's moving. And I, you know, last year he really improved his endurance ability. You can tell that hasn't topped off at all. I know with his NorCal crew, he does a ton of burpees and boxing, so I, I, he's doing great. He's just really impressing me right now. Sam Briggs now moving on to her set of nine. Rich Froning is in second, and Froning on to the set of nine as well. The two defending champions nearly rep for rep here on that set of nine. Approaching the seven minute mark. No time cap on this one. We're all doing all of these reps. After this set right here, the last two rounds is virtually this round that they're in. They only have, I mean, less than 10 reps of each of these movements. This is where the race really gets exciting and they have to push. They know they're at the end. They can't slow down. Neither of these athletes wants to come in second. Rich doesn't like to lose. And now we have a tie for first place between Rich Froning and Sam Briggs. Briggs and they get over the bar at the same time. Jason Kalipa on the right of your screen currently sits in second place. On the left, Graham Holbrook in the red shorts and Annie Forrest daughter in the yellow battling it out for fourth place. But now Rich Froning has taken the lead from Sam Briggs, but just barely. One rep. It's a half a hot, Sean. That's all, he, that's all he's got on him. But here we are to the last set of six and three. We are seriously down to the wire right now. The two champions, Rich Froning and Sam Briggs, head to head now on their second to last set of thrusters. You can see Froning looking at the Jumbotron. Jason Kaliba is still on his bar facing burpees. So now Rich Froning has faced just about everybody in CrossFit, but never the woman right next to him. Uh, this is just blowing me away right now. The head to head man to woman has been going this entire, the entire open season has been like this between these two athletes. This is unbelievable. And guess what? Girls, girls obviously are just the strongest guys. I don't want to admit that, but they are. They are doing amazing. But wow, Rich is, he's going nuts right now. And now Froning moving in to his final set. He's all by himself in the lead. Here comes Sam Briggs. Froning has been steady throughout. Three ball facing burpees for him, and he will be done. Briggs is on the barbell. She will beat Andy Forrest on her handily in this workout, but it's Rich Froning. And now 
Sam Briggs is in. Fronting a time of 8, 25.8. Sam Briggs just six seconds back. 831.4. Now the battle is for third place, and Jason Kalipa has a sizable lead. On Graham Holbrook and Annie Thorisauer, Kalipa on to his final set as the two champions congratulate each other. Jason Kalipa's through three, three bar facing burpees for him. And now here's the battle for fourth place as you go back to Kalipa, and he is about done. The hometown favorite, Jason Kalipa, one to go, and he is in. 904 or 906.5 for Jason Kalipa. And there's Graham Holbrook, the 2010 CrossFit Games champion. The only man, other than Rich Froning, to stand on top of the podium at the Games in the last four years. Annie Thorostotter, she's the two-time champion in the yellow shorts. She won in 2011 and in 2012, coming back from that back injury. You know, Graham's really in a tough spot. He's always had that championship kind of tainted because of what the, the rope climb deal with Rich. He has pushed harder and harder every single year. This has been his best open season ever. Um, you know, again, the open for these guys, this is not the end all be all. They want to get to regionals and get to the games. So they are obviously aren't peaking right now. Same thing with Annie. All of her events have been 20, 20 place or worse. That's not what you would think normally for the champ. But again, this is not what it's all about. They get got to get to the regionals and they get into the games and really hammer it there. Holberg on to his final set of three. He currently sits ninth place in the open. That's his best performance in his career he finished 23rd and 14.1 that's his best finish so far rich Froning cheering on annie thorisutter sam briggs cheering on graham holberg and holberg is done annie thorisutter the only champion still on the floor and she has the world's fittest cheerleading squad <laughs> bringing her across the finish line you know we say it every year whenever it's been at the regionals or the games or whatever None of these athletes have gone to go get a drink yet. They haven't made their after workout protein drink, nothing. They're here to cheer on the very last person. This is what CrossFit is all about. You talked about community, here it is right here. Even in the top echelon of the of, of CrossFit athletes, it comes down to this. Annie Thorisson is still flashing that patented smile. Three bar facing burpees for her, and this is a scene you see play out across the world and CrossFit gyms everywhere. Everybody cheering on. The final person to complete the workout, and that person often gets as loud as cheers as the first person. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta love the community of CrossFit right there. That's what it's all about. The love of the athletes and bringing them through to the end like that. Just amazing. 14.5 here in Kizar Pavilion is done, and it's that man, Rich Froning, with the victory over his four fellow champions. We'll have more from San Francisco, California, and Kizar Pavilion when we come back. You guys ready to work out? Yeah. Here we go. We're on in five seconds. All right, here we go. Three, two, All right, yeah, here one, we go. go. Woo. Oh, the Black Warriors doing great. Come on, Andy. Here, baby. One more. We're going to PR. Keep your arms still working. Let's bring him home. 804. Wow. Well, you guys did it. This lady should be in a straight jacket. This is the easiest way to legally get an abortion. Are these real though? I think she is fake pregnant doing video on purpose. If she really is, then she doesn't love her baby. She wants to kill the baby. Not fake. I usually like to look fake pregnant. This is really comfortable. And social services should take their babies at birth? What? Pregnant women should not be lifting heavy stuff, let alone this. I'll be taking my baby to the gym. But I'm supposed to lift my daughter. I don't think it's good for the baby. Is she on meth or something? She'd better not be getting paid maternity leave. Fit for the gym, fit for work. A man must have said that. No meth. It was really, really bad for my baby. <laughs> Mother of Chuck Norris. I think that's, that's probably a positive one. Though. I would like to claim that, though. A little ninja baby. That's what we create. Back in a jam-packed Keysar Pavilion. This crowd just watched five champions take on 14.5, and it was the three-time champ, Rich Froning, turning in the best time at 8 minutes, 
4.8 seconds, just doing what he does. Just doing what he does. Rich did not break down. He literally, from the first half of the workout to the last half of the workout, only slowed down 30 seconds. Rich Froning chased down Sam Briggs, who set the early pace. Briggs set a frantic pace early, but Froning just steady all the time. He doesn't slow down. He's smooth and consistent. He rests when he needs to up at the top of the thruster, taking a breath. And then he, I mean, he just does not slow down, and he's so athletic. You know, he just lets that work himself through the entire workout. And Rich Froning getting across the finish line first. Now, Sam Briggs was shot out of a cannon. <laughs> Slowed a little bit, but still an amazing pace for her. You know, it, it was she was the perfect rabbit for this workout. Get someone with just a grinding motor like Sam. And she put, I mean, she showed that she is a monster when it comes to any workout. Games, regionals, or the Open put in front of her, and it, it, she just hammered it. Samantha Briggs just sped through those first three rounds. Broding did catch her, but Briggs really just owned this workout <laughs> when you compare it with what Annie Thor's daughter did. And Samantha Briggs coming in behind Rich Froning and finishing second in this heat, but she sets the mark to beat for the women. Now, finally, Annie Thor's daughter, the two-time champ. We know what she can do. This is an open workout, and this is something you don't see. All these people cheering on Annie. She's not used to being the last person out there. Not at all, but you know, but this is what CrossFit is. Rallying that final person, getting everybody through the finish line together. This is what the CrossFit community is all about. This is what nothing else in any other sport other than CrossFit. Rory McKernan is on the competition floor with the winner of 14.5 here at Keysar Pavilion, Rich Froning. Mr. Froning, that was quite a show. Now, uh, you competed against many, many, many men in the CrossFit Games and other competitions. Was it a unique experience going against the fittest women on earth? Yeah, uh, Sam jumped out and made us all look stupid for the first round or two, and then uh, was fortunate enough to catch up, but she, she was flying. Slow down. <laughs> she said she wants to do it again head-to-head, -head, so maybe you guys can get back together. I know you feed off of the crowd here. Sounds like you got quite a few fans in the crowd. Did, were, were you hearing them through the workout? Yeah, yeah, great crowd. Everybody, thanks for coming out. I've, I've had two great trips to NorCal. Now it's Jason's turn to come to Tennessee, and we'll do one of these next year, Dave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Froning Jr. And standing by with Kiki Dixon is the lady that was on his tail, Sam Briggs. Kiki? Samantha Briggs, you are superhuman, girl. Now you came out the gates of running. You were ahead of the pack for the majority of the event. Was that part of your strategy, or were you just going with the flow? What felt good? <laughs> Obviously, this sort of workout is more about your gas tank and being able to go at a pace you can maintain. I kind of figured going head to head with four of the top athletes, I wanted to go fast in the first 21s and then just hold on to as much as I could. And when you saw Rich Roning creep on that lead, what was going through your head? I let him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap them fighting words. Ladies and gentlemen, Samantha Briggs. All right, I've got with me Dave Castro. Dave, now we see all the pieces to the puzzle. Tell me what you were thinking about when you put this last one together. It was time we decided uh, all the open workouts throughout the years have been time priority workouts and the thing with the time priority is the clock's gonna save your ass you know what I mean you can actually slow down and be saved by the clock here with this task priority workout you've got to get the work done and uh, it, it was time in this uh, evolution of the open for that it was time to throw in a uh, task priority and uh, we're really happy with the layout of the workout we're looking forward to the regional season. Regionals are next, and obviously all these athletes are going to be there. That's going to be really exciting. Shortly after the regionals, we're going to have the games, and then we're also looking forward to an uh, exciting off-season that you can look forward to seeing some uh, individual competitions with the big cash prize, and you can also look forward to seeing another team competition where you can create super teams. So we have an exciting off-season plan that you'll hear about more shortly. I'd like to thank all of you guys. You guys were amazing. Thank you for everything. Back. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, our final show of the 2014 Open. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
the PRs, the personal success stories, and of course the amazing performances. This CrossFit community is truly amazing. If you're joining us from home, remember that the Cool Down Show follows immediately after this. We've got five champions sitting down. We've got Dave Castro to talk about programming. It's not too late to get your tweets in now. So, like Dave said, the Open's over, but the regionals are coming up. And before we know it, we'll be in Carson to crown the fittest woman and man and team on Earth. You guys are the best community on the face of the planet. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. We'll see you on May 9th when regionals kick off. And until then, for one more week, I'll see you on the leaderboard. The Open has ended. Now the Proven move on to the second stage of the CrossFit game season, the regionals. 17 regions throw down over four weeks. The workouts are the same, allowing fans to compare their favorite athletes against the best from around the world. At the end, only the top three men, women, and teams from each region are invited to the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. For fans, the regionals aren't just a great competition. They also provide a taste of the festival atmosphere that was born on the ranch in Aromas. A gathering of tribes for the regional CrossFit family. Come for the spectacle. Work hard. Play hard. Join the fittest community on earth. The 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games Regionals. Be there. Rumor has it, we have some swag for you all. All right, so listen up. Here's the procedure, okay? Everyone has a pretty wristband on, so I want you to take your hands, put them in the air, both, the, all, both hands. As high as you can get them, everybody. Everybody's hands up. Now pay attention. I just want you to lean forward. I appreciate it, everybody. Travis. I thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. But if He's you so have bad. if you have a green, a neon green band, put your hands in the air. You are a lucky dude. Those neon greens are gonna get these Reebok intensified shorts right here. Make some noise. All 800 pairs. Our friends at Reebok have supplied 800 pairs of these intensified shorts. As you exit, all you have to do is show the Reebok guy your pretty band, and he'll give you those shorts. We have girls and guys shorts, all kinds of stuff. All right, I want to know, does anybody have a pink wristband on? If you got a pink wristband on, put your hand up. There should be 200 of you. Do you want a free pair of nanos? Yeah. You just got yourself a free pair of nanos on your way out. Show them that wristband and you're going to get one of those custom nano cards. Shoes, we love them. Travis, is there anything else to give out? We have one more prize. Is there a Ryan Stanton? Ryan Stanton, is he in the, uh, in the room? Ryan, where are you at? Ryan Stanton. We're looking for Ryan. Ryan, Stanton. are you here? Come on out here, Ryan. We want to talk to you. Come this way. Come this way, Ryan. Well, yes, yeah, go on. You're a young man. Jump on over there, Ryan. Watch you, watch you, watch you, watch. Oh, he's excited. I would We're be too. We're send Ryan to the hospital. That's his trip. All right, Ryan. So our friends at Reebok were out there all day today, scouring the neighborhood, and for some reason they liked you. Did you do anything special for one of the Reebok guys? Did you do anything special for any Reebok guy out there? interview I got your little interview well whatever you said impressed him so thanks to our friends at Reebok we're gonna give my man Ryan here a prize package to the Reebok CrossFit Games so whoa yeah so Ryan this you'll get airfare hotel and a gold ticket to the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games say thank you to Reebok thank you Reebok appreciate it Let's hear it again for Ryan Stanton. Ryan, how pumped are you right now? I'm so pumped, so stoked to go to the games this year. 
Awesome. Well, we will be looking forward to seeing you there. I can tell he's jazzed. He's shaking in his boots. Thank you, everybody, so much. 14.5, that's a wrap. Welcome CrossFit family to the Cool Down Show. This is your show. We take your questions from social media and give them to the athletes. Tonight, we've got five champions competing and Dave Castro here, of course, to talk about programming. First question is gonna be for Dave, but he's actually in a little bit of a conference right now. Dave, we've got Annie back, but now uh, Rich has told us that he's gonna take off and retire. What do you think about Rich claiming he's retiring? Rich retiring is an interesting thing. He, uh, it's definitely a personal thing. He needs to do it for himself. And what's interesting is in 2012, either 2011 or 2012, the first year we did the Berlin or the uh, USA vs. World, when we were writing the script for that show, at the time, Tony actually said, hey, why don't we call Rich the fittest athlete of the decade? And, and at the time, it didn't make sense. It was too premature. He, uh, you know, it was three years, he'd had three victories, one, one in second place in 2010, and uh, it didn't sit well with us. So I told him, no, we're not gonna do that. Now here we are a couple years later, looking at his record, 2010 second place, 2011 champion, 2012 champion, 2013 champion, 2014, looking like he's gonna win the Open. Pretty much, that's almost set. He is probably going to win the regionals and looking very strong to win the games if he wins this year again 2014 there is a strong argument and a strong case to say he is the fittest of the decade now look at this will there be athletes more fit will there be athletes that have a better work capacity across broad time and modal domains than rich in the future yes absolutely i can guarantee you that there will be athletes in the future that are more fit than rich will there ever be someone as dominant in this sport as Rich Froning? I say probably not. What Rich has done in this sport will probably never be repeated, and uh, he is, he is going to be, he's gonna be uh, one of our Hall of Fame legend athletes, and uh, even if he decides to retire this year, he's, he's given so much to the sport that, uh, that I... I want him to retire and go off and be happy. If that's what this man needs to do to be happy, that's what we want for him. So it's a, it's a touching thing for us, but uh, we want the best for him. Now, let's not put the cart before the horse. You still need to win this year. Yes, I do. You still need to win. And I bet you if he doesn't win, if he doesn't win, he won't retire. He'll come back for 2015. We'll see. Go ahead, Rich. I want to hear that. You got to have a response to that. Was a, that was a long way for Dave to say he would miss you if you left. I, but talk to us about your reasons for leaving. I, I love this sport. I can't thank uh, Dave, CrossFit HQ, Greg, everybody involved for everything that it's done for me and my wife, my family. It's changed my just our whole city in Cookville. Uh, to, to believe something in, you know, Santa Cruz, California can change the world. It, it's cool to be a part of. And, and I thank every one of you guys for being here through the whole thing. And uh, I've said before, it doesn't have to end on a win, but it needs to. So we'll see. But now... Let's put it into perspective. You haven't won yet, and these two guys want to beat you. So we heard you guys' thoughts on that, but talk about uh, Rich's possible retirement. Of course, you want to beat him at the games this year, correct? Um, Rich's retirement? I don't know if he's going to retire. He might retire from the CrossFit Games. I think he'll participate in other uh, CrossFit-related activities. I, um, I think that at a point, he's already proven that he is very, very good at CrossFit. And I think it comes a point in every person's life where they have other things they want to accomplish and they, they feel like they already got enough out of CrossFit and they already proved themselves. He's not doing this for anybody else for, than for himself right now. And he doesn't need to prove anything to anybody. Everybody knows he's already legit. So when it comes to a point where he's no longer having fun or no longer wants to prove it to himself, then he's done. All right. I said, I said retire from individual competition. All right. All right. Fair enough. So we could see you in teams. 
Let's take one now for the ladies. I got a question for Sam Briggs coming from Twitter. And I'll be over here and yell in her ear just in case she can't hear me. Oh, sorry, we got a gen general tweet here, let's go. All right, how did you all plan for this and how did that change once it was announced? So actually, um, I saw you and the, you guys both warming up. How do you plan first for an unknown event and then once you knew what it was, what was your strategy? I think we all kind of figured that it was going to be uh, thrusters and burpees. We just didn't know in what capacity that it'd be. So just did a general warm up. Uh, I think we both went on the rower just to get the heart rate up. Did some body weight movements and then a few light thrusters. So I think with anything like this, unless it's going to be really heavy, as long as you've done a general warm up, you tend to be okay to, to get out there and try and smash it. And uh, you guys had different strategies. So first, you came out hot. Did you just look at this workout and think I can be done quick? I might as well just uh, full speed, full tilt uh, sprint? Obviously going against four other top athletes, if I could get out in front, I'd be able to see where the other athletes were and try and stay out as much as I could. Uh, when Rich caught me up, we were head, head to head, and so it was kind of push myself a little bit more and maybe kill myself and miss a thruster, which I didn't want to do or just keep going at the pace that I was then holding. Cool. So, uh, Annie, you looked at the workout, and actually both you and uh, you and the rest of the athletes besides Sam looked like you knew what you wanted your pace to be. Did you have a plan coming into it? Well, I was just going to start off with like a steady pace, and then the plan was to increase the speed. <laughs> and then it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so, I guess I should have maybe just pushed a little bit harder in the beginning and then just try to keep the same speed, but... Yeah. If you had it to do over again, you'd go faster out of the gates. I, uh, yeah, I think we would go a little bit faster on the burpees, like keep a steady pace on the thrusters and try to push a little bit more in the burpees because it's hard, like mentally, it's just hard to push in the burpees uh, when you're really fatigued and tired. So I think I would have pushed a little bit harder there. But what's done is done. Right. right. Okay, fantastic. We can always do it again. We've got a tweet now for the Dave Castro. So Dave, what made you pick these movements for this workout? The dose, the stimulus, they're effective. They are, uh, they're, they're very effective at what we need done and, and the place they fell in this open uh, was appropriate. And first time we've actually paired these two in the open, traditionally every year in the open, it's been thrusters uh, with pull-ups, which is also very effective and a good dose. But this year we wanted to break that up. So we went with the, uh, these two movements. All right, so I'm going to come over here guys, so you guys can hear me, but obviously the competition atmosphere makes things, um, it makes you a little bit harder, right? Was it even more so? I know you all have trained together at different times, but coming here in this environment, this is more people that were at the CrossFit Games when you won. This is a huge crowd, and they were going nuts. Did that really affect you? Did it play into your performance? Could you have replicated this, in other words, uh, at the gym? Well, I think you have to put yourself in competition. Uh, it, I think to get the most out of your workout, you obviously had to put yourself in competitive atmosphere. You know, I train with Garrett and several others every day, but having these guys, Rich and Graham, to push against just takes it to a different level. So I'm happy to be here. If you want to put up your best time in a workout like this, there's no better atmosphere than in front of 4,000 people and against the world champion. That's, that's the bottom line. Yeah. Graham, same question. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just hearing, the, hearing how loud it is, how the, the crowd yelling to you know, several times looking at that bar, you hear them, pick the bar up, pick the bar, you know, just they're yelling at you to pick the bar up. Um, you can see Rich and Jason out of, my, out of the corner of my eye moving. And uh, if you don't have somebody moving faster than you, it's, it's hard to tell how fast you're moving. Um, so it was, uh, it was definitely good to have a couple guys to chase. It's not, uh, it's not always best being the one that's chasing somebody, but it allows me to see that I have a lot of areas I need to work on and keep improving. Nice. So before you answer, sir, I've actually got another tweet coming for you. So to Rich Froning, Rich, do you think this is your biggest competition this year? Yes. I mean, anybody who makes it to the games, uh, anybody at regionals, that's the beauty of CrossFit. Uh, what workouts come up, everybody's your biggest uh, competition. Any of these guys here, not so much the ladies because we won't be competing against them at the games. Uh, that was a fun little twist this weekend, or this week, I guess. But, uh, I mean, everybody, anybody that makes it to the games is going to be competition. That's the beauty of it.
Right on. Hey, thank you guys for being here. Thank you all at home for your tweets. That's our show for this evening. We'll see you May 9th when regionals kick off. Thank you. Have fun with the